Something occurred to me the other day as I was scrolling through my video recommendations on YouTube. It's something that I've had an awareness of for some time, the depths of which, however, have gone largely unnoticed until now. Culture is obsessed with conspiracy. And I'm not just talking about the big stuff, like aliens, Bigfoot, and the Illuminati. It has captured even the most obscure conspiracies and made them mainstream, from mysterious caves in the Mojave Desert to the untrustworthiness of pigeons. American society has grown into such a fascination with conspiracy that new stories are being crafted on what seems like a daily basis. As with most curiosities, I'm left with only one question. Why? Conspiracy theories are nothing new after all. Neither is widespread conspiracy hysteria. In the first and second century Roman Empire, conspiracies abounded that early Christians committed incest due to their agape love and calling one another brother and sister. Conspiracies also abounded that early Christians were cannibals due to their symbolic eating and drinking of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. To this day, many still believe that the Knights Templar in the 12th century amassed a vast treasure during their crusades in Jerusalem. In the 17th century, based on mass hysteria and superstition, 20 people were accused of being witches and were ultimately put to death in colonial Massachusetts. The assassination of US President Abraham Lincoln in 1865 spawned a myriad of conspiracy theories alleging the involvement of various groups, including Confederate sympathizers, political rivals, and even rival secret societies. With such a long and storied history, conspiracies are very much a part of the fabric of our society. At the very least, we can say that conspiracies are a part of human nature. The mystery, the intrigue, the unknown, and the thrill of a good story are all a part of what make conspiracies so captivating. As a kid, I loved riding my bike as far as I could down the street. The thrill of what was around the next corner is what kept me going. The stories my mother crafted at bedtime left me in a world of excitement and curiosity. You see, when you're a kid, the world is a mystery to be unfolded. It's unfamiliar and unknown. After all, as kids, we've only just begun exploring it. Its stories and fables fill our minds with wonder and fantasy. As we grow older, however, that sphere grows larger and the world grows more familiar. Long gone are the days of youth as we earnestly seek new endless wonder. The world we grew up in is empty now. There's no mystery around the next corner, no excitement across the next river. So we discover new worlds. Lost in books, movies, and television, we envelop and immerse ourselves in a world that is, once again, unknown. As children, we pursue mystery in order to discover the world around us and live in it. As an adult, we pursue mystery to forget the world around us and leave it. Death is the only inevitability and as a consequence, it is a reality we must confront or ignore at some point in our lives. Stories like conspiracy theories and grand tales of hidden treasure and secret societies are the tools we use to craft the stories to escape it. While human nature and existential angst may be a sufficient explanation for the insatiable desire for endless mystery, it feels like there is something more to this fascination. In particular, 2021 feels starkly different from 2019. Although 9-11 and vaccine conspiracies existed before 2020, there seems to be a bubbling, like boiling noodle water overflowing on the stove. The cultural obsession with conspiracies has grown larger, louder, and more daring. Perhaps this new phenomena can be boiled down to a single word, trust. We live in an increasingly divided culture. Look in any direction and it's hard to miss. While the division has always existed in some way, shape, or form, 2020 served as the earthquake in which those cracks grew into fissures. With each new fissure came a new divide. Politics, health, human rights, education. In fact, there may be some difficulty in finding any area of culture that hasn't felt the tremors of 2020. Regardless of what ideological, political, or philosophical school of thought you find yourself in, the divisions of the past three years have had an effect on nearly everyone. 
Where deep division and distrust abound, so does suspicion and skepticism. For many, 2020 not only served as an awakening to how deep the fissures go, but also to how numerous the fissures are. With social media now surgically attached to our cultural identity, we are more aware of division and distrust now more than ever. Social media has shown a blinding light on how deep this divide really is, and as this divide grows larger, so does our distrust of one another. Combine our growing distrust and hatred for one another, and our innate human desire for story, and you have the perfect breeding ground for conspiracy. Or as Thomas Milan Conda put it, conspiracism. So, you might be asking yourself, is this a bad thing? Are the hundreds of podcasts, YouTube channels, and social influencers dedicated to conspiracy theories a bad thing? Or is our cultural obsession with conspiracy helpful? As with most things, there are two sides to the coin. On one side, conspiracies keep us aware. By questioning and suspecting, they help us draw closer to what the truth of a thing really is, rather than taking something at face value. In our post-2020 context, they can help us examine narratives from a skeptical perspective, which in turn can help make us aware of bias and agenda. Sometimes this skepticism and caution is fruitful. That being said, there are many disadvantages to our cultural obsession with conspiracy. A healthy skepticism and caution can easily turn into paranoia and fatalism. The more social media sheds light on what there is to be skeptical of, the easier it is to be skeptical of anything and everything. We very quickly throw the baby out with the proverbial bathwater. Furthermore, conspiracy can foster close-mindedness, to the point at which we religiously align ourselves to something glaringly false in exchange for something blatantly true, like the shape of the earth, for example. So if conspiracies have both good and bad outcomes, how should we as a culture be approaching them? Should we believe every conspiracy that comes across our TikTok feed, or should we reject any and every assertion that is made that something might not be what it is? Perhaps the answer lies in neither and both. You see, if there's one thing I have learned in my life, it's that the most fruitful perspective is often the hardest one to maintain. See, the easiest perspectives would be to either reject all conspiracies or to accept all conspiracies. Neither perspective, if we're honest, requires much effort. To be discerning yet accepting, however, is a more difficult position to take. It requires us to be committed to truth regardless of what the outcome may be. And yet, if more people were committed to such a truth, I believe many of those fissures in our culture would begin to heal. The less we allow ourselves to be governed by distrust and hate, the clearer we may see those things about each other that we can trust. And that, if anything, is a place to start. Love you all, and have a good night. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nate. And I'm Adam. And this is For the Love of It. If you liked today's video, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on new content that we post on a regular basis. For even more great conversations, check us out on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also check us out on Instagram or TikTok. As always, love you all. Yeah. <laughs>